Hi there and welcome to another episode of Mr. Ed Codes and in this episode I wanted to look at moving a light source around the screen so that I could put highlights and shadows on some primary shape. So in this example here you see there's text Mr. Ed Codes, it has some highlights on it, it has some shadows on it, and then there's a light source in the back that's informing the program how to do that. In the example that I'm going to show you today and the challenge that I'm going to do today, I don't have the graphics in the background. So the, the light source in the background, that really cool thing there, we're going to have to do that in another video. For now, we're just going to work on the text and the highlight because we can do that real easily. That's, that's simple code. You need to know the map function. You need to know the noise, Perlin noise. If you don't know those, I will explain them to you and you'll be able to use them in a rudimentary way after this video and uh, push and pop that's my, if that's new to you I'll, we'll explain that and um, i think that's it so let's I think, let's push and pop to start this challenge we're going to have a new sketch here and we're going to set up our sketch like we normally do so we're going to give ourselves the available window width and height and we're going to give us ourselves some room to see what we're doing So how do we start this program? Let's work with the background first. Let's give ourselves a blue, um, maybe a mid-range blue background. So I'm gonna do uh, 100 comma 125. So our background's gonna be a light blue or kind of a, a grayish blue. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, that's gonna be dark enough. So the highlights will show up well and the shadows will show up well and our primary text will show up well. We need a position for our light. Our light source is going to be moving around the screen. So we're going to use the mouse for now. So let's assign the X position to our, our Windows mouse X and the Y position to our window Y. So now when we move our cursor around the screen, it's going to give us an X position and a Y position through these values here. We need a position for the center of the screen. That's where our primary text is going to be positioned. And then anything that needs to be offset from our text will be offset from that center point. So we can imagine that our primary shape is just a point in the center of the screen. And if we want our highlight to be on the top, near the top of that, we just offset that highlight value from the center of the screen. We're going to subtract it to move up add it to move down, subtract it to move left, and add it to move right. So that's how our offset ranges are going to go. They're going to go from a negative value to a positive value. For now, where we need our, our center position is just going to be the width of the screen divided by 2, and the height of the screen divided by 2. So I think right now we have all the, the information that we need to put our text, to start putting our text on the screen. So we're not going to worry about the highlight and shadow yet. We're going to put our primary shape there. You don't have to put push and pop here. I do because just out of convention, but you can leave this out. What push and pop does is it just keeps all of our transformations that we might happen to do inside this container and it's not going to affect any other transformations that have happened or could happen outside of that container. So we need a text size. Let's make that 100. We need the text to be aligned to the center of its X and Y. We want there to be no stroke, just the fill. And that fill is going to be black. Now up here we need a word. I'm going to put Mr. Ed Codes. You could put hello world or whatever you want. And then if we print that text, if we display that text using our text keyword and give it the center X position and the center Y position, with any luck we should see something here. So that should be the output you have, unless you changed your word, but it, you should have your word there and it should be on top of the background that looks that color. 
So just for helpfulness, let's annotate this this text here. We're going to put primary shape. We need a highlight and we need a shadow. I want the shadow to go down first and then the highlight and then our primary shape. So let's work on the shadow. Uh, skip that. Let's work on the highlight because I want our shadow to be tied to the highlight. So whatever our highlight value is, our shadow is going to be the inverse of that. So let's start with the highlight. We need an X and Y for our highlight, and that's going to be proportional to whatever our light source's position is on the screen. So if our light source is at the top of the screen, far away, we want from the center, we want our highlight to be as far off of the primary shape as it will be and then if we move our light source toward the center of the canvas then we're not going to be able to see our highlight as much on any side because there's no side that's favored so how do we do that we need to have the movement of our mouse be proportioned or we need to make proportions of our mouse movement and then tie those proportions to the amount of offset that we need to create our highlight position. So that may be a lot to take in, but let's actually do it. Maybe this will help it become more clear. So we need a, a, a tool to help us do this. Else we're going to have to do the math ourselves, which means we're going to have to be doing percentage, figuring percentages of things and interpolating those percentages. Uh, we don't have to do that. We can use a tool called map. So let's think of a variable. We're going to use highlights X and highlight Y. And I'm just for short, HX, HY. So our highlights X is going to be the map position. This is the interpolated values of our light sources X position. So we're going to start with our light sources X. This is moving back and forth. And we're that we know that that's a position that's from zero to the width of the screen. So we can move our mouse from zero X to the width of the screen and anywhere in between. So that's our range for our X light source position. We want to map that range to a set of values that is our offsets proportions. So that's going to be if the light source is on the right, our highlight is going to be on the right and same for left side it's going to be on on the same side with the left but that offset is going to be a negative or positive value depending on which side of the center it's on so we're not really looking at so much the the light source itself we just want to know what position what side from the center it's on is it on the left side or is it on the right side and then that's our range so we can look at this as the left side and the right side and then we just need a range that constrains where's how far left, how far right. Well, those can be the same value. And we're going to make that um, X offset, or I mean H offset. <laughs> I don't know my letters. And if this has to be subtracted from center, it needs to be a negative value. And if that, this has to be added, added to center to be on the right, then it's going to be a positive value. So that's how we get the range for our map. Let's do the same thing with Y. We're going to use our Y uh, light coordinate. And that's in a range from 0 to the height of the screen. And we're going to use our same offset value. So it has to be subtracted from the offset to be at the top and has to be added to the offset to be at the bottom. So this value here is left of center. These values here are going to be right of center. This value here is going to be at the top of center, and this is going to be at the bottom of center. And it's all relational to where our X is between zero and width, and our Y between zero and height. So does that make a little bit more sense? I hope so, <laughs> even though it was like overly verbose. So our highlight, we could probably put that in now that we have the coordinates for that. So we're going to fill our highlight with the brightest color so let's use 220 um, hue we're using blue hue I meant to say 
So 220 and 255 there. Maximum intensity. And let's drop in our word. Same word we're using. And we're going to use our center X and our center Y position. And now we just need to add our highlights X and add our highlights Y. And we, we're adding that. If it's a negative number, then it's going to subtract. You see? So we're just always going to add there. And then it will subtract what it needs to. So if we did everything right, and hopefully we did, we should see some highlight on this. Oh, you know what? I've, I've re done this video like three times and I've, I do this every single time <laughs> and it lets me know I do it every single time. We're using a variable here that we haven't assigned or even declared. So P5JS is like, I don't know what you're talking about. So let's set X or the H offset to uh, 10. So the maximum offset, the maximum distance our highlight will be from the center is negative 10 pixels or positive 10 pixels and the same with the top and bottom so if we move the cursor around the screen here hopefully you guys can see if you're getting the same output fantastic our highlight is following our cursor relative to our primary shape so what about our shadow same process We can actually use our highlights variables to produce our shadow. We could do something like this. Just duplicate that and change this to shadow X, shadow Y, and then multiply this times uh, a variable called shadow. And it could be five or six or whatever. We could do that. Or we could just do this. We're going to use, uh, we're going to assign shadow X that's going to be our highlight value times a negative uh, shadow and same with the Y it's going to be HY times negative shadow now we have a, va a variable here that we haven't declared or assigned let's do that here let shadow equal 5 why negative shadow? Well, th if the highlight is on the light side, we need the shadow to be on the opposite side. So we're, we have to inverse those values. So whatever was positive in uh, our highlight is, needs to be negative to produce our shadow. And I want my shadow to be offset five times as far as our highlight. What that's going to do is make the shadow look like, like it's being projected onto the background because the primary shape is floating above it some distance. So what's that look like? If we run this now, it's not going to show anything because we haven't put our shadow in here. So let's make our shadow color is going to be darker than our background color. So that's going to be 50 to 75. So our quarter range. Using the same word, the same center value, except for this time we're going to add our shadow value X and our shadow for our Y and then if we move this around the screen there we have our shadow projected onto the background our highlight projected onto what would be the depth of our text our primary shape it's actually it doesn't have any depth but when you add that highlight to it it kind of looks like it does so isn't that cool it gets out of range a little bit when we go up here into the corner. You can kind of see what is happening. You can see it's just different text printed in different colors. And when it's closer, it looks like it's extruded, like it has some dimension. We don't want to just use the mouse to move this around. We want, we want random noise to move the, around the screen. And it just does this on its own. Perla noise is going to stay within, like, it's going to it's going to be clustered around the center. We might occasionally get a random value that comes out here, but most of the time it's going to be moving around the center. So this is a nice range for our highlight offset and a fairly nice range for our shadow. You can mess around with those if you want and, and maybe come up with something even crazier, cooler looking. I'm sure you guys can do that. So for now, let's figure out how to do our Perla noise. 
So let's get rid of this here. Let's just comment that out. We're going to make a new X, and it's going to be a noise, Perlin noise value. We're going to give it the parameter X offset, and we're going to multiply that times the width of the screen. We're going to do the same thing for Y, except we're going to give it a Y offset, and we're going to multiply that time the, times the height. We're using a variable here that we haven't declared or assigned. Let's assign it here. We're going to give it an increment of uh, a fairly small value. Let's do that with our Y. Let's increment it kind of a small amount. And we've assigned variables that we haven't declared. So let's declare those up here. And those need some values um, to begin with because I don't want to use the same value for my X offset as I do my Y offset because it will create a noise range that is in a diagonal. They'll be the same value. We don't want to use the same value of X for our we don't want to use the same noise value for our X as we do our Y. So we're going to do a random assignment here. We're going to let X off equal a random number uh, in a range of 10. And that's going to be in a range of, let's say, 5. That's kind of arbitrary. These could be any different numbers, uh, just so long as we get different value here and a different value there. If they're the same, the motion isn't going to look cool. So work with that. Now we're we're moving through our noise with this offset. We've assigned that variable to the noise there. It is now our X and Y location. So let's run this and see what happens. Now we can see it's moving on its own. The shadow's moving around. So there you have it. How easy was that? So let me uh, run through this code from top to bottom just in case because I know how it is when you're typing in code from a tutorial. There's a chance you may have missed something. A line, uh, a small edit somewhere, and you never really see the full list of code in the video to know that. So you end up having to go to GitHub and do all that. It's like, how about we just go through the code right here so you can see. So there's the, the global space here. We have setup. That's all we have in setup. So the first part of draw looks like this. It's where we're declaring all of our variables. We have our center. We have our light source. We have our highlight, our shadow. And then this is where our output comes from. It's isolated in a push and pop. We have three different shapes that we're making. And we have some universal values that are assigned to all three of those shapes. And then that's the end of that. Have fun with this. I hope you enjoy using this code. It doesn't have to be text. It could be geometries. You could use a rectangle or circle or any order of shapes that you want to put together with like a, a begin and end shape. You could even use the, the shadow and highlight for that. You're, all you're doing is just reproducing layers of the same thing and you're offsetting them a little bit. So it's not that difficult to do. It's not that hard of a concept to consider, but look at the effect. Isn't that awesome? And then you can just go from here. So I hope you have really enjoyed this video. I hope it's helped you out. You've learned something. It, it's improved your power over these tools and that you're able to accomplish the challenges that you set for yourself. If you like this, thumbs up, subscribe, hit bell for more, do all that. And as always, until next time, take care.